Hello everyone and welcome to our video on the three-dimensional coordinate system. All right, so obviously uh, you all will have done plenty of work in two dimensions up to this point. So now we're going to start trying to expand our understanding of calculus further into three-dimensional coordinate systems. So the way we define uh, 3D space or the way we express 3D space is with ordered triples. So similar to our 2D space, uh, here we just have three dimensions, A, B, and C, of real numbers. And we consider the fixed point O as the origin of our coordinate system. So that's the point zero, zero, zero. We consider the X and Y axes as being horizontal and the Z axis is vertical. So imagine this is like going towards the right and this is coming out towards you through the screen and the Z axis is up. Now we place generally in standard position, we place the Z axis facing towards the screen, right? Like it's pointing towards you and the Y axis this way. And that might seem a little strange at first, but if you imagine that you're sitting on top of the Z axis looking down, then the Y axis would be your up and the uh, X axis would be to your right. So from that viewpoint, if you imagine looking down from the top of the Z axis, this looks like your normal X, Y axis. So we determine the orientation of the Z axis that is which direction it we call positive, using the right-hand rule. So the right-hand rule basically says you uh, imagine lining your wrist along the y-axis with your elbow pointed in the positive y-direction. You point your index finger in the direction of the positive index axis, and you stick your thumb up. Wherever your thumb is pointing is what we call the up direction, the positive z direction. So let's just take a look here at, uh, at this 3D model. So in this model, we've got this green axis is our y-axis. This red axis is the x-axis. So this is kind of our standard position right here. And the blue axis is z. So you can see if you were looking from the z-axis down, you'd have the y-axis here and the x-axis here. So hopefully that helps visualize it a little bit. Now, of course, most of the time we don't have the time uh, to deal with 3D model just to visualize something in the 3D uh, space. So we have to figure out kind of a way to draw some points that helps us visualize them a little bit. So consider a point, ABC. Uh, we can draw this point by drawing what we call directed lines for each coordinate. So in general, what that means is you take, you start at the origin, and you draw a dotted line along the uh, x-axis until you go out the distance of A. And then you draw a line, a dotted line, in the direction of the y-axis out a distance of B. And then you draw a dotted line, the distance of C, in the z-axis direction. So the combination of the dotted lines gives us visual cues that lets us interpret in space where this point is. So let's do that with a uh, more specific physical example here. So we want to plot 2, 3, 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark out on my x and y axis. So 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3. And then my z axis, we're actually going in the negative direction. So we want like a, a negative 1 down here. All right. And so the way this goes is we draw our dotted lines out along the x-axis until we get to 2. And then we go in the direction of the y-axis out a distance of 3. Now keep in mind, these two lines should be parallel. So if you've gone a distance of 3, it should just be about the same length as this 1, 2, 3, right? 
And then we're going to go, in this case, down one. And that's going to give us our final position, P, 2, 3, negative 1. So if I'm, for example, asking you to plot a point, I'm not expecting a perfect drawing here. What I'm expecting is just the ability to illustrate that you visually understand the idea of this coordinate system and can convey that. And you can do that with these directed lines pretty clearly. Okay, so uh, let's move on and consider something else here. So notice that if you have a coordinate P, a point P, that you can draw a rectangular box using our coordinate system. So imagine you took this point B and you just drew a line straight down to the XY plane here. So we'll go back to that 3D model for a moment. So you've got some point floating up here in space, right? If you were to draw a straight line down and just land it on this xy axis, right, that vertical line will be parallel to the z axis, right? So any line you dropped straight down from a point. So that's what we've got here. We've dropped this uh, point from P down to here. We call this Q. And since P was the point ABC, and we're just using that same designation from earlier. Then now Q is going to be the point AB0, because our Z value is 0 here. And now if we look at the x-axis, if we were to draw a perpendicular line over to the x-axis, what would we get? Well, we'd just be out a distance of A. And <clears throat> uh, similarly, along the y-axis, this distance is B. Now, if we were to project this point onto the z, y axis, that would mean x would be 0, so we would get the point 0, b, c. And if we were to project this point onto the x, z axis, that would mean now the value of y is 0, so we get a, 0, c. So, as I said, we call q the projection of p on the x, y plane. So Q is the projection of P on XY. R is the projection of P on the YZ plane. So we're projecting this onto the YZ plane. And S is the projection of P on the XZ plane. Okay, so this is going to come back into play in just a moment. But uh, for now, let's just keep a, take note of a couple quick things. That we define this space as R3, meaning... Uh, the set of real numbers in three dimensions. Now, in R2, an equation involving x and y uh, describes a curve, but when we refer to an equation uh, like that in R3, it's going to describe a surface instead. So let's just look at a quick example. So describe and draw the surface z equals 3. So first, we're going to draw our coordinate plane system. And again, this is not something I would ever expect to be perfect. Most of us are not artists, so we just do the best we can and just try to convey the idea as clearly as possible. Now, the surface z equals 3 means the set of all points for which z is equal to 3. So, yeah, z has to be 3 here. But we should actually be including every point for x and y, every coordinate for x and y, as long as z is 3. So this is all points that look like x, y, 3. Well, hopefully it's pretty clear that that's going to be a plane that passes through this point and is parallel to the x, y plane. So we'll just try to draw a plane that passes through this point best as possible. So the tip I would give uh, to make these planes look like they're kind of where you want them to be is if your plane, for example, is parallel to, say, in this case, the XY plane, then its tilt should 
kind of match the tilt that you've got your X and your Y axis at. So when you're drawing your little dotted lines for your plane, uh, they should kind of look like they're the same angle. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as you've kind of made it clear what's going on with your space as best as possible. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. Describe and sketch the surface in R3 represented by y equals x. All right, so in this case, it's all points of the form x, x, z. That just means our x and y coordinates have to have the same value. So if you think about that, you can get like an uh, image of this if you consider, for example, when z is 0. So when z is 0, uh, then you should have just the line y equals x, which looks like this, right? All right so that's just going to be the line that's passing through the origin and is in the xy plane where x and y are equal to one another. But this equation allows any value of z, so we actually need this to look more like this. It should be the plane, and in this case it's a vertical plane, right? So we're trying to draw the sides of this plane uh, facing up. So hopefully that's a little clear. Uh, you might, to make things a little more clear, I might have chosen to draw this line in a different color red and then draw the uh, plane passing through it. But as long as your picture is fairly clear, it's not too big of a deal. All right, so let's move forward here and talk about distance in three dimensions. So first of all, as a little reminder, uh, Way back from geometry, if you have two points x1, y1, and x2, y2, the distance formula for the distance between these two points actually just comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Right? The length of each leg of this triangle is going to be x2 minus x1, and then y2 minus y1. So if those are the corresponding lengths of the sides, then the Pythagorean theorem says d squared is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And so the distance is just the square root of that. Well, pretty naturally, the distance formula in R3 is almost the same thing. So in this case, and of course the order that you subtract it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent uh, you know, across coordinates. Uh, in general, it doesn't matter in this case because you're squaring, right? So you'll just get the negative of one another. So if you square it, that negative cancels out. So in this case, I've written it actually x1 minus x2 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus c2 minus c1 squared and take the square root. So that's the distance between two points in three dimensions. Now, it's a little bit different here because you can't just straight up use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's actually prove this. So we're going to start with a simple case where we consider the distance between the point A, B, C and the origin uh, O. So if we look at the image on the left, and we, what we want here is the distance from the origin to this point, and we're calling this distance d. Okay, so 
if I want this distance, I want to solve for the right triangle that's implied here that has one leg down here in the xy plane and then goes up from here up to this point P1. But in order to do that, in order to solve for D here, I have to know the lengths of these two sides. So how are we going to find them? Well, C is pretty easy. C is the Z coordinate of the point, so its distance from the plane here is just C. But this is not so straightforward. I know A, and I know B from my coordinates. What else do I know? I know that they form a right triangle here. Right, the way we draw our points, our directed points, this will be a right triangle. And so I can apply the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this little piece here. And uh, what did we call this? We called this W. So D squared is W squared plus C squared. And W squared here is A squared plus B squared from the Pythagorean theorem. So altogether, d squared equals a squared plus b squared plus c squared, so d is the square root of those things. But keep in mind that everything we did here was just based on geometry, because really a, b, and c were just distances between the points. So if we were to move this and actually take the distance between two arbitrary points, a, b, and c would just become the distances x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1. And then we plug those in place of a, b, and c, and that's our general formula for distance. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to talk about the equation of a sphere real quick. So an equation of a sphere with center hkl and radius r is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared equals r squared. Now, hopefully this makes sense because the definition of a sphere geometrically is the set of all points that are equidistant from a center. So if we're applying the result of the distance formula here, where r is the distance, uh, then all we're saying here is that this is the set of all points x, y, and z that are a distance of r from the center h, k, and l. Now, if the center is at the origin, we get that x squared plus y squared plus c squared is equal to r squared. So let's, uh, let's just do a little example involving a sphere. Show that x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 8x minus 6y plus 2z plus 17 equals 0 represents a sphere and find its center and radius. So, uh, might have been a while since you've employed this technique, but for this problem, we're just going to need to do a little completing the square from algebra. So first thing we're going to do is rearrange everything and group according to our variables. So x squared plus 8x. And after each set, I'm going to leave two blank spots, which uh, if you're a little rusty on this, don't worry too much about it. You'll see why we're leaving those in just a moment. And then y squared minus 6y. and two blank spots, and plus z squared plus 2z, plus two blank spots. And then we still have this plus 17 equals zero. But I'm going to actually go ahead and subtract that 17 and put it over here for now. Okay, so just as a quick refresher, uh, the heart of completing the square is just recognizing that if you have something of the form x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared, it can be factored to x plus b over 2 times x plus b over 2, and hence it's equal to x plus b over 2 all squared. So the trick here is that if we already have b, what we're going to do is add half of that squared, so 8 over 2 squared. But we don't want to actually change the value of our equation here, so we're just going to subtract that 8 over 2 squared as well. So we're really adding 0, but we're adding it in a way that's going to let us factor these first three numbers into a perfect square. 
Okay, y squared minus 6y. What do we get here? We get we want to add half of 6 squared and also subtract it. And then here we're going to add half of 2 squared and also subtract that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, break each of these down. So when I factor this, I get x plus 8 over 2, right, b over 2, but 8 over 2 is 4, all squared, minus 4 squared, plus, and now we're going to factor this, and we get y minus b over 2, which is 3 squared. Now notice, in the example I did off to the side, or the uh, explanation I did, I was using the x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared. If we've got a negative in front of our b term, that just makes our expression negative in the middle here. So this is minus 3 squared plus. And now this is going to factor to z plus b over 2, which is 1. So all squared minus 1 squared equals negative 17. Now if we take a look here, we've got negative 16, negative 9, so that's negative 25, and another negative 1, so that's negative 26. So if we add that across, we're going to get a positive 9. All right, so we had negative 26, we add 26 to both sides, we get a positive 9 here. And on the left-hand side, we get x plus 4 squared plus uh, y minus 3 squared plus z plus 1 squared equals 9, which is exactly the form of the equation of a sphere. So that tells us this is a sphere with center negative 4 positive 3, and negative 1, and radius 3, right, since r squared is 9, r is 3. Okay, well, that's it for this section. Thanks for watching.